Well, let's now get more on Tuesday's Israeli election from Tal Harris, executive director of the One Voice Movement, joining us on the line from uh, Tel Aviv, I believe. Uh, calling for a two-state solution, I should add. Tal, what do you think is behind this dwindling support of Netanyahu's party? Well, I think that uh, the current elections are an interesting, um, present an interesting development in the way the two blocks of the right wing and the left wing in Israel are shaped. I think that the right wing has become much more right wing and the left wing has clearly, more, more clearly become uh, left wing in the uh, sense that we all expect it to be. Um, there are two polls uh, running now against each other and um, Netanyahu finds himself uh, leading a party that's offering a vague uh, platform, actually no platform at all. They, they have not presented a program, a party program, to address a lot of the issues that are concerning Israeli citizens from the left and the right and are dividing them according to those uh, patterns. Well, one of the policies that Netanyahu has not been vague on and very frank on is, of course, about building more settlements uh, and, and kind of taking this hard line. How much real security in this promise to keep Israel safe no matter what uh, can be given to the country through this platform? So I think that you've, that's a very important question that a lot of Israeli voters uh, are not uh, really facing, and that's uh, the contradiction between a promise, a vague promise that was made three years ago or almost four years ago in Bar Ilan University for a two-state solution adopted allegedly at least by Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, and an increasing uh, build-up of uh, the settlements which uh, make uh, a, a two-state solution increasingly harder. I think that uh, there's also another side to it though, and we see this uh, in a recent study published by uh, Daniel Abrams Center in the United States, in Washington, where uh, we see an increasing uh, number of people also among the right-wing constituency, among the uh, voters for the right-wing parties who would accept a two-state solution based on the 1967 borders. And when you think about the prospects for this government leading a policy of uh, more settlement expansion and indeed um, even annexation of the occupied territories in the West Bank, I think that it would lead not only to a growing pressure and friction with the United States and President Obama with the European Union uh, and with the Palestinian population, but it will also lead to a growing uh, disappointment in the Israeli public uh, that uh, is still supporting and I believe will still support a, uh, it's, uh, it's an uphold, it's right to peace and security, which can only be manifested and, and realized through the two-state solution. Uh, I want to talk more in depth about that pressure. Uh, since 2010, of course, peace talks have been frozen on the Palestinian issue, and then you have relations which are relatively tense between Netanyahu uh, and Obama. How much pressure do you think we could actually see in the future on the global stage? I mean, the past has really been a lesson that sometimes as much pressure is put on, it, 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 it might not, you know, create a solution. So how do you see a way out of this? Well, <clears throat> you've uh, noted several factors that will definitely be in the mindset of the Israeli voter when uh, he or she uh, approached the ballot uh, in less than 24 hours. And uh, it is uh, dangers such as international isolation, uh, dangers such as uh, a, a third intifada or violent slash nonviolent uh, uprising on the Palestinian front. I think that uh, the biggest pressure, though, would come uh, from the Israeli public, uh, whom, as I said, is a primarily um, seeking for the good life, seeking for a, a sort of uh, um, status quo, and a status quo will not be realized, will not be, uh, will not be possible uh, without some progress on the Israeli-Palestinian front. So while Netanyahu has been appeasing for very long the hardline uh, settler lobby, there's also a growing lobby of uh, moderates who have been, uh, uh, who have grown tired of the uh, mishmash policies and, and the trying to, you know, appease 
both the settlers and the um, international community at the same time. And we see even now in the month leading up to the election, uh, when we go in campuses ar around the country, our activists are um, opening uh, mock ballots and urging people to vote on whatever issue that uh, is uh, cons of concern to them, be it social justice, um, security or whatever other issue is on their agenda, they know uh, the clear relation to a solution with uh, uh, the Palestinians uh, to their everyday concerns. This connection is becoming ever more clear, crystal clear to people's minds. Will it be manifested in the uh, polls tomorrow? Maybe it's uh, too early um, for, and maybe it still needs to, to, um, to, to ripe a bit more. And in that respect, uh, the, that uh, tension uh, between what Israelis want, the good life that they want, the security, the social justice, uh, the welfare that they expect to see, and the, re and the solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, maybe that connection and the tension between those two aspirations, maybe it's not fully understood yet by the entire Israeli electorate, and we will end up with a right-wing uh, coalition. Um, but uh, I believe that in the next four years, the greatest uh, change would be the voice of those 250,000 people who have uh, clicked and shared uh, uh, the video that One Voice released uh, recently and have attended our uh, town hall meetings in the month leading up to this uh, um, election and have uh, increasingly um, engaged with uh, the call for the upcoming leadership, be it as it may, from the right or the left, uh, to um, well, we, back, we will certainly uh, be watching uh, the, very closely, um, like you said, to see if yeah. uh, there's any shift in the status quo. Israeli elections, of course, Tuesday. Tal Harris, activist, executive director of the One Voice Movement, live with us on the line from Tel Aviv. Thank you for that.